In this tutorial, we're going to model this canopy and uh, I'm going to show you what's the easiest way that I use to model these complex shapes and uh, curves. So the first thing I want to do is I want to import the image into Rhino. I'm dragging it, selecting OK. Now I'm just placing it here in the top view. Uh, now the next thing I want to do is I want to draw a line from this part to this part to have approximately the dimension. It doesn't matter if the dimension is not correct uh, because we can change it uh, later easily. Now I have this dimension, so to say. So I'm going to approximate that this is actually a square. So I'm copying this line over here. And then I'm just going to um, copy it once more. Rotate it 90 degrees and move it into the position here and here. So this is just uh, a reference for me. So now I'm also going to divide this in in uh, in half like so as a reference. So the next thing is uh, I'm actually going to use a plugin called T splines for Rhino to actually uh, get this shape. And if you haven't, uh, I have a video clip specially for T splines, so you can check it out. It will be somewhere in the window here. So I'm going to use the plane here from T splines. I'm gonna select two. I'm gonna select here one for X and one for Y so that I have a, sim a simple plane. So I'm just going to drag it here and there you go. So now the next thing is I'm going to, so this is my, this is my T-splines plane. And uh, what I can do now is I can actually uh, manipulate it very easily. So for example, just to show you what it, what it does, if I move it like this, you will see that it's quite smooth. So this is, there, there's two modes. There is smooth mode and there is complex shapes mode. So I'm just going to go back now. And first I want to do the symmetry. I want all these four squares to be the same. So I'm going to use this option here. Uh, that's called the uh, symmetry on. I'm going to say add axial. I'm going to select from here to here. And I'm going to, to do this one more time. The green line represents the axis of the symmetry. I'm going to do this one more time. Add axial, and now I'm going to go from here to here. So I have now four uh, axes. So what this does is each time I uh, each time I, I move one point, all the all the other ones will move as well, which is what I want. So uh, now the next thing is. Actually, now I see that I should have added a little bit more edges. So in order to do that, I'm, go I'm just going to uh, select uh, my plane. I'm going to select the edges, this one and this one, for example. And I'm going to go to and click here, which is insert edge. Here in the, I'm just going to turn this off for now. Here. So yeah, so now I have this edge all around the other planes as well because it's a symmetry. I'm going to do this uh, again. Okay, so let's go to wireframe mode. Select the edge, T-spline edge, T-spline edge, and one more time, T-spline edge. And selecting the insert edge command. There you go. So now we have uh, now we have this, um, uh, we have, we have the division, which, uh, which we need. So now I'm going to, uh, actually, uh, I'm going to rotate this image so that I have a better view of my, uh, of my, uh, canopy there. So I'm going to use, uh, rotate 3d move it like so and now I'm going to go to the perspective sorry to the front view and position it in the middle 
I like so. So now I'm just going to bring this up. This is my T-spline geometry. And I'm going to approximately start. So now, uh, once we have this uh, plane, uh, I'm going to uh, just uh, lock the images first, this one and this one. I'm typing lock command so that I cannot move them in space. Uh, next thing is I'm going to move the T-spline vertices uh, in order to get this shape that I am looking for. So I'm just going to go to the front view for now to see what we can do. So this is all like work in progress. You don't need to be very, um, like uh, it doesn't need to be perfect because it can be easily changed later on. So I'm just going to approximately uh, move the the vertices so that I get the geometry I want and later on uh, we can refine this further to have better uh, better sh better shape so let's see I'm selecting the vertices now and moving them into the position like so So let's say that I'm I'm pretty satisfied with this shape that I want to continue with it. And um, actually, I just saw that it actually has the curve here. So what we can do to make this curve is actually uh, just move these vertices a little bit down. So now I'm just going, once I had these two vertices selected, uh, I'm going to move them just tiny bit down and now move this one just a little bit to have this uh, slight uh, effect there maybe I can also move these ones a little bit just a little bit to have better smooth uh, transition okay so once we are happy with the shape and we are finished with these splines. The way to convert this, I'm just going to select curves and delete them. Uh, so the way that I, that I would do this is uh, I would select the T-spline object and then there's this button here that says uh, convert uh, to Rhino, convert to Rhino NURBS, which is a right click. So once I click right click, it, it's a Rhino geometry. So now I can do whatever I want with it in Rhino. So now once I have this surface, I'm just going to extrude it a little bit up, like so, so it has some thickness. Then I'm going to use the, I'm going to use this border to create some sort of uh, edge around. I just use the command duplicate border to get this shape. So once I have this border, I'm going to use offset uh, curve uh, on surface. This will be my base surface. I'm going to flip it. And uh, now I have my edge here. So once I have this uh, edge, I'm going to extrude it a little bit. Like so. And uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to patch it as well. So in order to cap this, we need to use the command patch. I'm going to select. I'm going to type duplicate border to have uh, the whole uh, border of the geometry. I'm going to deselect the bottom one, and I'm going to use command patch now to have it. Uh, closed off. Uh, so once once it's closed off like like this, uh, then I can uh, use it for for later. So now uh, I need to create this additional surface. So I'm going to use this patch surface that I created. Okay, so it's there. 
so this patch surface I'm going to to copy a little bit up and then I'm going to scale it up a little bit like so and now the only thing left is to actually connect these two edges and I'm going to use uh, command uh, sweep to use this to, to make this so I'm now just creating the section curve and I'm going to use sweep 2 this is the first rail this is the second rail actually the second rail needs to, to be closed so I'm gonna duplicate border join so that I have this curve that I can use for railing and so I'm going to use sweep to chain edges first rail second rail and section curve press enter and there we go we close it off and there we go we close it off uh, now I'm just going to add a little bit of thickness to it I'm going to throw it just a little bit so that it has the edge so uh, that's uh, that's our main canopy and now let's just add um, let's just add uh, the bottom the bottom parts so I'm going to the front view and I'm going to approximately draw a rectangle to match to match this uh, geometry I'm using the mirror command now and like so so now I'm going to the top view going to wireframe I'm extruding this like so I'm going to move it in the middle mid that's it and now I'm going to I'm going to actually use the uh, the side view to approximately uh, get sorry the perspective view to get the desired uh, look uh, this I'm gonna hide I'm gonna use it for later let's cap these two and I need to create these two, these four uh, columns. So I can, for example, copy these like so. I can scale them, uh, move them a little bit here, mirror them like so. Um, let's position them correctly like so and now if we take a look at a picture it's actually uh, scaling down so I'm going to use uh, solid points on scale it like so maybe scale it even a little bit like this in this direction and uh, and there it is that's our column so now I'm just going to I'm just going to position them correctly and there it is let's unlock the geometry hide all of this move it to the center and uh, let's render it see how it looks so here is our final result uh, this is the render that we did from our model uh, hope you like it and uh, if you like these videos please share and subscribe